Hello everybody. I hope all of y'all are having a good day today. I, um, I, I said a, a while back that, that uh, I was waiting on good internet service um, so I could start putting a lot of teachings that I have here <laughs> um, on the web. And it doesn't look like I'm ever gonna be able to get good internet service here. And so what I wanna do is just start recording these things as much as I can and get them down and uh, that way whenever I do find some Wi-Fi somewhere I can upload them uh, a few at a time uh, you never know how much time you have in this world and uh, I want to make sure that uh, anything God has shared with me any manna that God has shared with me I want to share it with you I want to feed you too and uh, you know if you got some there's it's, it's okay to eat alone but it's better when you have company you know and so so I want to share it with you guys Today I want to talk about um, the rich man and Lazarus and uh, people's idea of what hell is. And um, mine differs from what most people's idea of hell is. And um, I, I, I want to share that with you guys today. One of my biggest peeves is to see somebody post one of these short animated videos of people in agony in hell and they're melting and their eyeballs melting out of their heads and 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 up in the top they write well in hell you'll melt like this and be screaming in agony and right before you die god will restore you again to where you can live through it all again and that'll just be that way for all eternity and you'll just be screaming and melting screaming and melting screaming and melting and they say i'm sharing this with you guys because i love I love you and I don't want you to burn in hell. First of all, in my opinion, anybody that uses fear instead of love to bring people to the feet of Jesus, anybody that uses fear to make you have an understanding the way they do, then they do not know God and God is love. And whenever God who is love has awoken within you, the only thing that will come out of you is love and not fear because with love you can talk about love the rest of your life and never run out of words to say you know we're told that that the kingdom of god is within you so if the kingdom of god is within you then the kingdom of hell is there too all right it's within you it's all around you same with the kingdom of god all right you have the two thieves the left and right hemisphere your brain you know your 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 logic and your creativity and these are the thieves the thieves come to steal and kill okay but it's only whenever these two are joined to christ in the middle remember christ at the hill where he was crucified buried and he raised from the dead golgotha the place of the skull all right the two thieves will will cause you to live a life of hell Okay, they'll put you through misery going back and forth, back and forth on God and heaven and hell and all these things. It's not to, until you turn to Christ in the middle and the sleeper awakens that all your answers will be answered and you'll find that peace that surpasses all understanding. A lot of people use the, the, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus to convince people that of a literal hell. And I want to show you my understanding of this today. You know, first of all, look at the name Lazarus. Lazarus was of another name of a character in the Gospels that Jesus raised from the dead, okay? But there was Lazarus and then there's the rich man. And when Lazarus dies, okay, he died to himself and, and he goes up and he, he sits by the side of Abraham. And the rich man is saying, please, please, you know, give me some water, help me, give me some water, spiritual water. Okay, he's thirsting for spiritual water. He doesn't have that. He has his Torah, his holy scriptures, and, and he, he's not able to see them. You know, remember, remember Jesus said, you diligently search the scriptures and you think because you have them that you have eternal life, but they just talk about me. You have to come to me. So you have to come to him to have that water the living waters but he says you know bring me some water and, and Abraham says to him you know hey the, I can't do it but there's a huge gap a chasm between us 
you know, and, and even I wanted to, I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't help you, all right? But, but that word chasm there, look at that word chasm. That word chasm is widow. And you remember the story of, of Peter raising the widow from the dead? And you remember all of her widow friends were in there wailing and weeping, saying, look at all the things she made when she was with us. And Peter made them all get out of the room, and then he presented her alive to the widows and the believers. She was no longer a widow. She was a believer because she has a husband now. All right, so that gap, that gap in between Lazarus, Abraham, and the rich man was filled by Jesus. He's the link to the two sides. And see, the rich man was an unbeliever. He wasn't a believer yet. All right, but he says, please send somebody down and talk to my five brothers. Number five is used a lot in, in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, but the number five always represents the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. All right, he had those, but he had nothing. But he says, I'm in this place of torment. And say, so all these people that want you scared to death that God's gonna put you in hell for all eternity and be poking you with a stick, you know, they, they don't understand this. That, that word for torment there is basanos or basilius. It's, it's a funky word. But it, it's like a, a, a stone that you use to, to mark gold and silver, precious metals, when it comes out of the refiner's fire, when it comes out of the purification fire, and, and if you want to ch test the purity of gold or silver, you, you mark it with a stone, see if, it, if, if the gold comes off on it. And if it does, it's good. If it don't, it's got to go back in the fire and burn a while longer. You know, that's where he was. He was in a place of torment, in a place of testing trials all right he's like come help me i need some water in this place of trials that's what being baptized in fire you're baptized in trials you know you got to go through hell to get to heaven all right that's basically what's going on here and if you remember the story shadrach meshach and Abednego, they got thrown into the furnace and the only thing the only thing that was burned was the things that were binding them. They were slaves to the law, to false religion, okay? So he was in a place of testing, trials and tribulations. Remember, Paul wrote, I, I will tell you a mystery. All of Israel will be saved, all of them. And this man, the rich man, was obviously part of Israel. All right, but because of his unbelief, he has to go through the fires, the tribulation, the torment. He has to be tested, all right? And then he will be refined and he will become a believer. Christ in the middle, in the middle, will fill that gap and he'll be able to cross over to the other side. He'll be able to ascend. Anyway. Anytime anybody uses fear to, I can't stand when people use fear. Love is all you need. Love is the answer to everything. Love conquers all. I love you all. God bless.